Hello everyone, this is Ricky Fury again, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. My previous video covered the basic survival abilities you should probably use while playing the game. The vi this video will be going over how shield hardness and shield resistance works inside the game currently. In my opinion, due to how Crypto currently displays this information throughout the game, this is actually the hardest concept of this entire survivability tutorial to actually talk about. Due to this, you may need to watch this tutorial several times to fully understand it. To begin, the way that damage works in ground and space, besides a few weapon exceptions, is that 90% of the energy damage and 100% of the projectile damage that will hit your captain or your ship um, will end up hitting the, shield, the, the shielding instead of the hull while the remaining 10% of the energy damage will pass through and hit the hull or your captain hit points. I talked about damage resistance in the first video, which focused on hull, so now I will talk about shield resistance, which is basically the same thing, but with shielding. For example, if your shielding has 10% shield resistance, and a phaser beam of 100 damage hits your ship on a sufficient shield facing, 90 damage, will hit the facing, and 10 damage will hit the hull. Of that 90 damage that is hitting the shield facing, 9 damage will be negated by the shield resistance of 10%, while the beam will provide any one damage to that shield facing, the damage that is remaining af after the shield resistance. Now, most of the time in Star Trek Online, shield resistance is just a standard all damage shield resistance when it, when it is not specified. The only time that this is not specified, to my knowledge, is when it is sometimes referred to on your shield arrays themselves. Now, my particular shield array says reduces all energy damage to shields by 10%. But there are some shield arrays that are more specific, like for instance, some might say reduces phaser, polaron, and tetron damage to shields by 15%. In those particular instances, um, the shield resistance may be different from type to type, but generally overall, um, um, shields are going to be relatively resistant to all the different types of energy, energy damage out there. Um, now, the, now the bigger problem with shield resistance, in my opinion, at, as a way it is currently implemented inside the game, is that this total shield resistance does not show in the overall stats of every ship. Like, like, like feel free to look. Like we have defense, we have hull, hull repair rate, shield regeneration rate, stats of, of what your shield totals are, all these resists, which are only your hull, this is not your shield resistance, it's something completely different. And we got cool things like defense and accuracy, which most people don't even pay attention to, crit chance, crit severity, which a lot of DPS people will care about. We have tactical stats, which doesn't show it. Which doesn't show it. We have science stats, which shows shield hardness, but this is only the stats strictly from the skills, not, not from um, other sources, which um, is definitely um, in, in my current ship build right now. Then we have engineering, which doesn't show anything, and then there's movement. So th th this stat is literally not showing anywhere over here. Now, uh, because of how, how the stat is hidden, um, in order to really talk about this further in this video, I get to do some cool calculations for you all to kind of show like how 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 these things actually add up for 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 what your ship will probably do. Yay for that. So, um, to, so to start off with, um, the first place to look is a category called shield hardness. Now, the way that this thing works is that each point that you invest in shield hardness, as well as each each um, point of power that you invest in your shield power setting, will add 0.2% um, shield resistance to your overall ship. Now, this particular shield resistance adds because it's categorized as shield hardness. This is a this is linear scaling. So everything, um, everything the investments from the skill points and, and all of your power the investment here, this is this is completely good. You invest as much as you absolutely want to in this stuff, and it's going to keep on adding what what the numbers say that it, it, it's going to add. Um, I, I I personally have two points, but even with just one point invested in shield hardness, this adds um, 10 percent um, sh um, shield resistance to your ship, which which is which is decently good. Now, um, 
because I, it's, it's hard to show lots of cool examples and things. Um, what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm, I'm going to be comparing two different ships. I'm going to be comparing um, a Romulan DPS ship, just because Romulans have really terrible shield, um, terrible power, and so their their lowest shield power as well will be kind of showing, as well as what my ship is 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 able to do because of certain things that I have, as well as one broken trait. So to start off with, um, I'm I'm assuming with, with this Romulan ship that 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 he has invested one point in into shield hardness, which which allows him to have 10% shield resistance right off the bat. And because of his shield power of 15, which is about as low as you you, you, you can possibly get in, in the game in terms of your power levels, um, that 15 points of shield power equates to about 3% um, shield resistance based on how the calculations work inside of shield hardness. And because this, this is linear scaling, you're able to add this together to get a 13% shield resistance base for the ship, which to be honest, still isn't that much. Um, But it's still something. Um, ship is still going to be torn through the like like tissue paper, but it's still something. Now, what I'm going to be doing is for for this next calculation, I'm I'm going to be adding two different power like two different powers of the two powers that are really good in adding shield resistance to your ship. Uh, the first one that I, I like to use is a, is a is a power called emergency power to shields. Now, ignore the last three lines. I'll talk about that later in the video with, with a trait that I have that's utterly broken in the game. Um, but the other stuff works for everyone. Um, and, and the biggest sadness here is that um, by, by using this thing for the full 30 seconds, um, it adds 18% shield resistance to your ship for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the duration. Now, um, something that, that's really important to know is that um, this 30 seconds isn't dependent upon this power. It, it'll, it'll just keep on going um, even after you you enable a different power. So like, like for instance, like if I push this and the 15 seconds later I want to push weapons, um, that, that the remaining 15 seconds on the shield resistance is still going to be going um, for, for the whole time, even though I, I have some additional power now instead of shields. So yeah, so constantly during my battles, I will often be spamming emergency power to weapons and emergency power to shields because of this shield resistance. Um, the other um, important power that, that will increase your shield resistance is a power called transfer shield strength. Um, it, it's, it's in the science category instead of the engineering. Um, and um, it is pretty good. Um, it adds anywhere between 7.9 and 8.1% shield resistance. Um, Depending upon like what, what different powers and things are active, and what you've recently pressed. Um, this calculation, I, I was assuming 8.1, just trying to give him the benefit of of, of the doubt here during, during this this instance. So whenever you multiply, multiplicatively add these things together, because that's the way the math works, um, you end up with um, at the peak of, of this particular um, captain's stuff on his ship of 37.45 percent resistance when he has both those powers up. Um, and, and he's fighting, which is okay. Um, in my personal opinion, I, I personally like to have at least a 30% resistance on, on my hull, as well as around a 30% resistance, at least on my shields. Now we're going to go ahead and wander over to my ship. Um, now, now for my ship, um, I like to have two points in shield hardness. I don't put three points just because this third point only adds an extra 3%, um, which I can easily make up in with, with my shields, because shields also adds a lot, especially like as, as an engineer, um, when I add different like emergency power stuff, my shields go f uh, fairly high, going from 92 to 145. An extra 50 points of shields is definitely more than, than what I would get from, from investing one more point in the shield hard hardness here. So for me, it's not that valuable. Um, now, for those of you who um, can't afford to put power into shields, and based on how, how you set up your bridge officers, you can't afford like transfer shield strength or emergency power to shields in your build at all, in that case, I would highly recommend completely um, in, in investing three points into shield hardness in, in the skill tree. It'll allow you to have 20% shield resistance on your shields at, at all times um, 
And at the end of that point, your shields won't get torn through like tissue paper. And some of them won't be great like tanks, but, you know, it's it's still going to be at least something. So, yeah, um, so, so overall, for my calculations, 17% because of the two points ends up having um, 85 points in the skill, which gives 17% sh um, shield resistance. And then whenever you do the calculations of, of that, that every five points of, um, of shield power gives you 1%. So in the so 92 points divided by 5 gets 18.4%. Uh, because these are both linear scaling, you add them together. So my base um, shield resistance um, is at 35.4%. Which, if you compare these 35.4 with the 37.45 that this guy at the peak had, they're pretty similar. So yeah, depending on how, how your ship is, uh, a lot of people with, 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 with their tanks just having a couple points in this as well as a high a high level in shields is probably going to have shields about as strong as yours even if you like use a lot of abilities now the, this the, the, this can be bridged a little bit like if you have something on your shields like uh, reduce all the energy damage to shields by 10 percent or if you have some some of those special consoles which i mentioned in in the first video which are really really rare that happens to add um some additional shield resistance to your build. And if you have a console light like this one that adds shield resistance, that's fantastic. And, and, and you'll be able to add this stuff into, into like numbers like, like this. However, and unfortunately, it's not something that it's it, that that's super visible in Star Trek Online at the moment. So it's, it's hard to really compare this really easily without pulling out the calculator and doing some fun math. But um, but the, but the way the way the mine works is I have my base at 35.4. I have the 10% for uh, for the shield, which unfortunately is multiplied into it by the way the math works and, and the categories. I, I'll still use emergency power of harder shields one, but I will typically use transfer shield strength two. This isn't actually the Bruce officer's things that I use. I, I'll, I'll use transfer shield strength two, um, and now when, when, when you multiply all that together, you end up with a shield resistance, um, the unbroken shield resistance of 53.33% which is pretty high. Um, whenever you're, whenever I'm, you, you use abilities, that's about as high as, as what my, like it, it, it's around the mouth of my, my base hole is, which is pretty good. Um, now, when I use my broken trait, now this trait I, I, I have to talk about, um, there's now there, um, in terms of all the traits out there, there's only two traits that I've been able to find that add shield resistance stats to your, to your ship. There is there's a trait called pattern re recognition that as, as, as you're in combat, you add um, defense and shield hardness, which, as I mentioned before, shield hardness is just shield resistance, except it's shield resistance that scales linearly instead of um, instead of the non-linear curve that, that the damage resistance has, has problems with as well. Um, and then there's shield overload. The stat that the, the, the trait that I say is I would say, in my opinion, is the most broken trait in the entire game. I would say it's, it's even more broken than Invincible, like, like, like on, on how broken this thing is. See, it's even more broken than that one. Like, like yes, it gives all damage resistance, so, so like, if, if you don't have a tank, this is this is significant right off the bat. But also, it gives a 75% shield resistance for 30 seconds. Now, now, to show you in the math, those of you who haven't been, look, been look, 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 looking down, when you add the broken trait at 75%, like right at the very beginning when I, when I activate this, when I literally just activate that whenever I already have this thing up, I have 88.33% shield resistance. Okay? If I'm getting hit by a... If, if I'm getting hit by 100 points of phaser damage, of that, of that 90 damage that's hitting my ship, I'm getting two damage. Maybe even less than like 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 one point something. However, it's sort of like it'll round up to two points, but yeah, it's it's really broken. It is really really truly broken. Um, now, um, this this does, does come from from a sea store ship. Um, I, I happen to get it from. Um, from Zen that I got from my, my monthly stipend as, as being a lifetime subscriber. 
But um, so, so yeah, this technically paid to win. But but e even without this, having this other stuff, having 53% resistance on, on shielding, that is great. That is great. Like, like that that's still on on par with 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 my base stats. And if I'm you know activating these other resistance things, I don't have all of it up, but um. Like, like yeah, if this is 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 on par with with my normal resistance stuff like it, but 54 percent. Um, so yeah, um, that's kind of the super basics on how shield resistance works, um, along with the reason why my ship, like if you've ever ever fought against my ship, as to why my shields seem to never deplete very much, it's because. About half the time, it's a it's it's a like eighty percent resistance on on my shields, and the other half of the time, it's around fifty percent resistance on my shields. Combined with the, my whole my my resistance on my hull, is always going to be at, uh, over over forty five percent because of because of honor dead. Um, so yeah, um, TLDR. So TLDR stuff. Um, Easiest ways to get shield resistance on, on on your ship. The super easiest ways to get base shield resistance is by investing in the shield hardness traits here, as well as increasing your um, your, your shield power. If you really don't want to invest in shield power, um, a couple of other ways to get some some temporary shield resistance is through the burns power power to shield ability, as well as the transfer shield strength ability. Both of those provide decent shield resistance. And, and, and that's great. Also, also um, a, a lot of shields um, will have, um, whenever you go to Ultra and Epic, will often have some sort of, of, of um, energy, energy damage reduction to shields category, which also factors into this shield resistance. So some of you, if you may have been building optimally for shield resistance and may not have even been knowing about it. But yeah, um, that's about it for now. Um, thank you all for listening in. Um, if, if this stuff was confusing, Feel free to listen to this this video a couple of times, and if it, even if it's still confusing for you, um, feel free to send me a message on on Facebook or in game. Um, thank you all. Thank you all for listening and watching, um, and enjoy your day.